Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Egberto Will is your host. Thank you so kind of for being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. But today I want to start, <clears throat> before I get into the core of the program, I want to start with sort of a monologue. But before I get there, you know who comes first in our book. Who comes first? Melanie Keelan from Barcelona, Spain. Who comes first? Eric Hayes from Kingwood, Texas. Who comes first? Lee Grant from uh, somewhere in Montgomery County. Who comes first? Shiva Las Vegas. Happy Friday, she says. Who comes first? Bridge MCP. Who comes first? AVQ. Who comes first? Avery, Evet, Avery, Herod. And all subsequent people joining our show today on the chat, on air, on podcasts, and everywhere. First of all, thank you so kindly for being here. Uh, we cannot do this without having you as part of our PDR Posse. You guys are all our joyous members of the PDR Posse. Anyway, folks, as I, I get all these things put together here, including my Linking up here at Daily Calls because I want to make sure that this stuff is well covered. Uh, you know how that goes. Before I go into anything else, we're going to have a, a great show. Let's see. Uh, Lee Grant says pro Palestinian rally at Cooper Union leads to uh, leads to something. I'll read that after uh, Lee Grant. But anyway, um, I am still taken aback. By this entire ordeal. I mean, I still just can't get it wrapped around my head. I can't get the misinformation wrapped around my head. I just can't get it. And the reason why, folks, is that, uh, first of all, we are doing the wrong thing as a, as a country. I can just tell you that straight up. We are doing the wrong thing as a country, starting from the embrace with the president and Netanyahu. The president made himself complicit in only what could be called a genocide. And look, I, I, before we get into using these words, before we go into really these statements, I want to tell why we have to use those words, why we must use those words. Uh, but before I go into why we must use those words, I want to point out the murder of Israeli citizens is just that. And a murder, a violent act, a terrorist act, trying to achieve a means by terrorizing people, by murdering people, by killing people. Yes, what Hamas did was a terrorist act. And what Israel is doing, I'm going to put it on pause because I want to first tell a story. We have a lot of newcomers to the program. We have a lot of new people that hadn't been here before. So I really want to tell a story. And this is a personal story. A personal story. And you guys, many of you have heard it before. I don't know to what extent. But um, back in the 60s, Panama had a whole lot of regular, what America would have liked to call democratic governments that were horrendous. Arnulfo and all these other guys that came into the country. First of all, let, let, let's, let, let's, let's back up first. Panama, I, I'm going to give a, a little bit of history, and then I'll really get into it. And I ask you to please bear with me, because I think understanding this is best. I think understanding this is best. I'm from a, a place called Panama. Many of you know it. The newcomers don't. Panama was a part of Colombia. It was a part of Colombia. The Lesseps tried to build a, a French guy, tries to build a canal. It, under the auspices of Colombia, etc., they were unsuccessful because they were trying to build a sea level canal. But the Americans wanted to build a canal. They wanted to connect these two oceans. And they said to Colombia, hey, we have the engineering that we could do and we could build a canal. We have a technology that we think could work instead of this sea level canal, which is the lots and building a big lake in the mountains and you get the ships to cross over. 
And Colombia said, yeah, we're not giving you the, we're not giving you the, um, we're not going to allow you to build a canal. It's a private, it's a, it's a separate country. Now, what happens? Uh, America says, oh, so you're not going to allow us to build a canal, eh? We're going to show you. So what did America do? America put a battleship in the port of Colón, Colón Bay, where I'm from. And they put a ship there and say, okay, uh, our, our stooges in Panama, declare your independence. And as soon as they declared the independence, America recognized Panama. And as soon as America recognized Panama, they say they signed a treaty to build a canal and, and control the land five miles on either side of the canal in perpetuity with a, uh, not with an American, but with a French dude. All right. Uh, I forgot it. Bonavalia. He signed it. And then henceforth, then America builds the canal in Panama after cre after causing the necessary revolt to create the country of Panama. All over that time, we've had uh, terrible Panamanian governments under the auspices of the United States. And these governments would always get into skirmishes here and there. And back in the 60s, we started to have a lot of the Panamanian folks rioting against the American side of the, the isthmus, the, the five miles on either side of the canal that the Americans controlled. They had their, the Americans had a police force, a government, a, ju a, a, a judiciary, all of that within the boundaries of Panama, the country. Bear with me, folks. We're going to get it. I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. So they created Panama. They created a little America in Panama. My father, and, and, and by the way, they paid much better than the Panamanians did. So my father got a job on the canal zone, but he was living in Colón, meaning he works on the canal zone, but he lives somewhere else. And then, and then, and then, and then, when the riot started, meaning a lot of Panamanians coming into the canal zone to fight the Americans because they wanted their dignity. They wanted their land. After all, America came and took this land, right? They built the canal under false pretenses of creating the country. They wanted control of their land. So we've constantly had these riots. And my father and many other Panamanians also who worked for the American government were forced to use these hoses on the on these fire trucks to kind of keep order, right? And eventually the Panamanians said, you Panamanians are traitors. We are going to throw you guys out. We are going to get you. Well, then what did the Americans do? They allowed all these Panamanians that were living outside to come and join and live on the canal zone where they could be protected by the American police force and the, and, and the, the, the police forces. And, you know, these skirmishes would happen every so often, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, things normalized, and the Panamanians living in the canal zone had their area on the canal zone to live where I live. You know, we had, uh, we had to live partially in the canal zone, and, of course, we had a house in the Republic of Panama itself. Now, Omar Torrijos Herrera was the dictator that came in and said, we're going to end this. And he finally got a treaty signed with the American government, right? With the American government to give the land back, including the canal. And by the way, they were paying America, Panama like 20 bucks or so for over 500 square miles. They were paying like $3, $3 million for 500 square miles. In Italy, they were paying 50-something million. I don't know the exact numbers, but millions of dollars for little uh, 10, 15 square miles of area. So they really took advantage of Panama. And the Panamanians started to react to it. And Omar Torrijos, they called Omar Torrijos a dictator. I call him Panama Simón Bolívar. Not that I really care about Simón Bolívar, but some supposedly liberating the, the Latin American countries. And um, when, when uh, Torrijos signed the treaty with uh, President Carter, uh, the canal got turned over over a period of time. It took about, I think the treaty was signed in 1970-something. The canal got turned over in 2000, 1999, December 31st. To the canal and everything is now run by the Panamanians. But 
America always said it had its interest in the canal. So uh, when Torrijos wanted to do certain things on his own, meaning he did not want to have input from the United States of America, he went off and did things what's best for Panama. They built a dam, Lago Bayano, in Panama with uh, with uh, uh, with. Uh, then, uh, then the country that was called Yugoslavia, which was split now into Bosnia and Herzegovina and many other countries. Okay, but anyhow, he he made deals with everybody to, to make the country better, and he did. If you go through all through the country, the country is no longer only Panama City and Colón. It is now Panama City, Colón, Chiriquí, uh, Honduras. I mean, uh, 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 Bocas del Toro. All these places are built up now. Because Torrijos was into progress, they, America called him a dictator. So what did they do? Supposedly, quote unquote, the CIA killed him and elevated Manuel Antonio Noriega. The reason I gave that whole story is to tell you that from the inception of Panama, the United States had its hands in the pot. So all these things that were going on were things that are instigated by the United States. Now, uh, now, Noriega was a spy for the United States CIA, and he would spy on Colombia, he would spy on Honduras, Nicaragua, and all these Central American countries. But uh, when when Bush and these guys wanted to, uh, to him to help them with, I think it was to invade Nicaragua, you know, remember the Sandinistas? I think it was the Sandinistas. I don't think it was one in El Salvador. I think it was Sandinistas. and. <laughs> Noriega said, nah, look, I'm doing my thing, man. Noriega was like the financier, the clean money for the drug dealers who, you know, the Colombian drug dealers, etc. And they allowed him to do that because he was always there for the United States. The first time Noriega said no, the United States put a stranglehold on Panama. And I'm, I'm, I want you to stick with me with this story because this story is the story all over the world. So Noriega said no. Bush, number one, says, I'm going to show you. You never tell the United States no. The currency in Panama is the Balboa. One Balboa is exactly equal to one dollar. OK, one Balboa, one dollar. In other words, we pegged our currency to the American dollar. Great. What did Bush do? Bush took all the dollars out of the Panamanians hands. No Panamanians could hold. Once the dollar went back into the Treasury, it could not come out. So Panamanians were starved because, again, we used the United States dollar. We used the United States dollar just like we used the Balboa. But now there was no United States dollar that other that that trade could affect. So people created innovative ways to work, you know, IOUs and all of that because they didn't have money. Americans living in the canal zone became kings and queens because $20 from an American who lives on the canal zone could go places in the Republic. They could go into the city, Panama City, and those dollars were precious because it was a method of exchanging. So Bush won, crippled the economy. I remember when we went there back in 89 to visit, uh, I remember my wife looked at and said, uh, am I going to be okay in Panama, right? It was uh, one of the first times she ever went to Panama. And I said, of course, you'll be fine. Just don't open your mouth. Don't let them hear you be a gringa. That's what they call uh, Americans, right? And everything went fine until she went to a beauty salon. And when they found out she was American, because of what Bush had done, I'm just showing you the, the human nature, human nature. Uh, my wife was not a supporter of Bush. My wife was not a supporter of, uh, of the policies that Bush did. But because of the policies of Panama, I mean, of Bush towards Panama, they hated her guts. She went to get her nail done and she couldn't speak a, a ton of stuff. And my grandfather, who took her to the, the nail shop in Colón, uh, left her by her lonesome to go to a bar and chill out with some friends he hadn't seen in this because he lives in the States. And all my wife heard was people 
messing with their fingers and like gringa, esta gringa piensa que es esto y esta gringa, meaning this, this American, they think they own the world. And this is the kind of stuff she was saying. And my, my grandfather, when he got there and my wife in tears that, you know, she was mistreated and that sort of stuff was about to give them a piece of their mind. And, you know, I, I kind of looked and I said, look, uh, I, I look, it's wrong what they did. It's wrong what they did, but, but, but you understand the human nature of her being the representative of your oppressor. She was the instantiation of the oppressor and they wanted to take it out of her. All right. So I bring that story up now to take it to the next level. We came back to the United States, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And here's what happened. Noriega continued to say no. Noriega, you have Noriega on TV with a gold machete. And he said, bam, ni un paso atrás. We're not returning. We are not again going to be colonized by the United States of America is what Noriega was saying. And, you know, he had a big pelota. He was like, there's no way we are going to get moved back into colonization. Well, that didn't sit well with Brother Bush. Brother Bush created Operation, I don't remember what it was called then. But it turns out, I got some early word. I'm living here in the United States. I'm an American citizen now. I'm living here in the United States. And I get a call from a brother. He is also a Panamanian naturalized who worked for the CIA. And he said, Egberto, and he says, uh, you, you, it is going down tonight. That's all he said. It is going down tonight. Make sure your people know it's going down tonight. And uh, that day, I got a call from a cousin in Panama. The C-130s were landing in Panama like every few minutes. The C-130s. Landing every few minutes in Panama. We know something is up. Panama knows something is up. They know something is up. And then at midnight, they jammed the TV stations and they jammed the radio stations and they put out there. This is not an attack in Spanish and English. This is not an attack on the Panamanian people. This is just, we are just here to get the, 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 the criminal Manuel Antonio Noriega. And who was Manuel Antonio Noriega? He was the president of the country. Well, he was the leader of the Panamanian government. You don't, I don't care if you like him or not, but that's who he was. We are coming to get... Now, now think about some country that thinks America did something wrong to them, and they fly into your country... And then they say, we're here to pick up your president to try your president in our country. Well, that's what the United States did in Panama. We are here to get your president. Okay? So they come in. But they didn't just come to get the president. They came to destroy the military force. And not a military. We just have a police force. No Navy. No Air Force. Just what we call La Guardia Nacional. The National guard and they went into my father lived in Cullen, uh rainbow city arco iris uh, a few of my friends live in a place called chorrillo which is where the cuartel nacional the, the where the where the where the base was where noriega normally would be and there's another major headquarters in a place called david in chiriqui the interior of the country the United States came with C-130s. They tested out the stealth fighter. They went into, my father, when he was, he recalls, recounts the story. He's dead now. When he recounts the story, he was running under the bed because you had the Apache helicopters and all these other helicopters over his home sending missiles into the Guardia Nacional in Colón, decimating the, guard, the, the headquarters in Colón, the headquarters in Chorrillo, Panama City, the headquarters in David. In the process, it decimated everything around it. And you know what was around the buildings in Chorrillo? 
tenement buildings with thousands of people that live there, and they just let go bombs, all these bombs destroying Chorillo, all these bombs destroying Colón, all these bombs destroying David. You don't see that on the TV here in the United States, right? But that is what the Bush military, under then the auspices of, uh, of uh, I think it was General Powell, did in Panama. They're there to get one guy. They are there to arrest illegally, an illegal act to arrest the leader of another country because just because you have the power to do so. So they came in. They couldn't find Noriega. Noriega knew what was coming. These C-130s were landing all day. You know, the Marines came in in the, in the middle of the night. Most of them got stuck in the mud. They were so stupid. They didn't know that in low tide in Panama City, the beach goes out for about a mile. <laughs> the beach goes out for a mile and you're stuck in mud. And many of the Panamanian citizens had to go out there and pull a lot of the soldiers out of the mud. But so according to the UN, I think it was 4,000 people died. According to the United States, 1,000 people died. According to me and many of the people who know the populations of that area, at least 10,000 people dead. Again, to get Noriega, to get Noriega. My question to you, and then I'll relate it to today's world. My question to you is the families of every single one of those dead Panamanians that were murdered by the United States military under the direction of President Bush number one to arrest Manuel Antonio Noriega illegally, how should they feel? What kind of an act is that? How is that not a terrorist act? What they did to bring one man to justice. One man to justice. All those dead Panamanians. And what is the most hurtful is that the people of America, first of all, don't know it. There are documentaries you can watch on Netflix if you really want to, but who wants to? There are documentaries you can see on HBO. You can see all these documentaries about how America went into these places. Uh, with an ulterior motive and in the process killed a lot of people, innocent people, how is that not terrorism? How is that different from what Hamas has done? Let me give an example. I really want, I hate what Hamas done. I don't believe in killing. What Hamas did was murder. It was terroristical murder. And I wouldn't do it. Even to my oppressor, I wouldn't do it. But to sit back and play the game as if you have this moral authority because somebody killed, you ain't got the moral authority. Those dead 10,000 Panamanians because of Noriega not wanting to do something you asked him to do while you turn your head when Noriega was laundering drug money for Colombia and others. By the way, a lot of a lot of uh, Trump bankers remember that they launder money too, right? So let's migrate this to before we get to Israel. Hamas and Palestine. Let's migrate this towards Iraq. We had several Saudi citizens come to America, learn how to fly planes. We had spies telling many of the people in our government 
that something is up. There's a group of people that are likely trying a terrorist act to blow the smithereens here in America, 9-11. And we did nothing about it, and 9-11 occurred. 9-11 occurred. These guys trained in Afghanistan, the trainers who, uh, who ultimately came and blew up our buildings, etc. Now, we knew that. We knew that. But we wanted Iraq. So we turn this devastating act that occurred on American citizens, this terroristic act by bin Laden. We turn this terroristic act for an ulterior motive, and we go and we bomb the smithereens out of Iraq. Okay. Was uh, uh, the, the president of Iraq, uh, who was it again? President of Iraq, Hussein. Was Saddam Hussein a good guy? Saddam Hussein was a terrible guy. But we've had terrible presidents too. You know, Bush, number one, killed over 10,000 people in Panama. You know, hey. So now, we go to Iraq and we kill hundreds of thousands of people for the terroristic act of killing 3,000 Americans. 3,000 Americans got murdered. 3,000 Americans got killed by terrorists. Yes, a bad thing. And what is our reply? We killed hundreds of thousands of Iraqis, folks that had absolutely nothing to do with what occurred in America. And then we ask. You know, they like to put out there, they like to put statements out there. They hate us because of our freedom. No. They hate us because of what we do. They don't hate us because of our freedom. It's not like we even have freedom ourselves. They hate us because of what we do. Again, take a look at the numbers. Take a look. Read critical thinking. You know why they don't want you to critically think? Because start, things look completely different. When you learn the truth, when you learn the truth, things look completely different. So we have what America did with us in Panama. And by the way, that has been repeated in IT, Haiti. That has been repeated in the Dominican Republic. That has been repeated in Reagan and Grenada. That has been repeated over and over and over again. Ask about Maurice Bishop in Grenada. You're the Grenada. You don't know about it because we don't play it up big, right? So check out Grenada. We created a, we got a stooge in a, in, in a president of one of the Caribbean countries to say, oh, we're scared of Maurice Bishop. You have the United States, the authority to invade. Like if they had the ability to give the United States the ability to invade Grenada. So we did it. Ronald Reagan did it. So we had Bush who blew the smithereens out of Panama. We had Reagan, who blew the smithereens out of Grenada, among other places. We have Bush number two, who blew the smithereens out of Iraq, forgetting about civilian life. Civilians, again, in our country, some lives are worth more than others. And if we will learn that reality, some lives are worth more than others. Because we don't mind killing Panamanians. We don't mind killing Iraqis. We don't mind killing Palestinians. Bush, I mean, brother Biden comes out today and his first thing is, I don't believe the number that the Palestinian authorities are telling us about the amount of people that are dying. Yet you take a look at the Google images between three weeks ago and this week and you see neighborhood after neighborhood after neighborhood destroyed, carpet bombed, cement down to the ground with dead people under there, with hospitals. You see the devastation at hospitals. You see the carnage in hospitals. And you tell me you don't see it? Look, 
let's get back. The Israelis should not, those 13, 14, 1500 Israelis, that was murder. That was a terrorist act. But murders, those murders were terrorist acts. But please don't dare say that those murders that Hamas did justifies decimating that already open prison that you have called Gaza as you kill these people, as you starve these people, as you thirst, put these people in thirst, as you prevent them from having hospitals, etc., etc., etc. And anybody who says Hamas brought it onto themselves, where is your humanity? This has nothing to do with Hamas. It has everything to do with the Palestinians. Everything to do. So again, so again, as I mentioned, folks, what's going on right now will bring blowback. Our president, with that embrace of uh, the criminal Netanyahu, our president, with the embrace of that criminal, that thug, that assassin, that murderer, Netanyahu. That hug has put the lives of every American in danger. I gave the story about Panama. Why did Linda get mistreated in Panama? Blowback. Blowback from Bush that she had nothing to do with. Blowback from Bush she had nothing to do with. What Israel is doing right now, what Israel was do, is doing in Gaza right now is not making them safer. So my brothers and sisters in Israel, just like many are trying, uh, just like the Israeli criminal Netanyahu is using collective punishment on Palestinians by saying, hey, you guys elected Hamas, you're just as guilty. Many on the other side are saying, you guys elected Netanyahu, you're just as guilty. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying, listen to the words. Look at the act. 1,500 dead Israeli, an act of terrorism. 7,500 Palestinians dead, another act of terrorism. There is absolutely no doubt another act of terrorism. Now, I've told you three stories. One, you may not have known the Panamanian story. I've told you the Iraq story that we should all know, but it's fuzzy because of the misinformation that we get. And then you know the Israeli story is currently unfolding. Where do we go from here? The truth of the matter is this. Um, America, it is time to disassociate themselves, not from Israel, but from Netanyahu and the policies of the Israeli government that is trying to push the Palestinian out, that has effected an apartheid condition on all Palestinians, including Palestinians of Israeli, uh, of Israeli citizenship. There is a, a grandson of the founder of Israel. And I don't know if I have, if I'm able to play the TikTok right now, but I'll try to get it for you tomorrow. Uh, the grandson of the, uh, of the founder of Israel, one of the founding document signers of Israel, he's on the tour and he's trying to express right now that what Israel is doing right now is terrible 
for Israelis. He talks about the three. He talks about the three types of government: one for bona fide Jewish Israelis, another for Israeli Palestinians, and and not meaning Israelis that are not Jewish, and another for Palestinians in the territories. It's a speech that I think everyone needs to hear. We should not be afraid at all. If you're, if you know what is in your heart as far as loving people, you shouldn't fear telling the truth, allowing some to try to throw the anti uh, anti-Semitic trope onto you. What I'm saying here, I make sure to clear with me, when make sure to make sure to that I'm 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 not missing anything that would that would unknowingly make me uh, seem because I am not but seem anti-Semitic. So I make sure to clear this with those who know, those who are Jewish and know, because that is how important this particular that is how important this is we cannot allow folks we are harming ourselves folks anyway anyway i hope you get the gist of what i what i i wanted to get across today because too often too often what happens is that we only hear what's on mainstream media and what's on mainstream media doesn't tell the truth. It does not tell the truth. In fact, it is required, if you want the advertising from your corporatocracy, if you want the advertising elsewhere, this is what you have to do. One of the reasons I don't cover this on air at KPFT uh, is because I don't want to uh, put the, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Bridge, I'm sorry that I went on and on and on with the subject, and I had a 20 minute video to play, but I can't play it now. But I think it's I think today was an important dialogue for people to first understand that, um, you know, put it into context. When there are dead people in Panama, when there are dead people in Iraq, when there are dead people in Palestine, they don't ask if what kind of terrorist act caused this. They just know. That dead people should not, uh, I mean, that the people are dead. That's all that they know, that the people are dead. That's all. Egberto Willis, regarding the 18 killed and 13 wounded in Maine, please post this. Congress must have wearing it. Let, of course, I'm going to post that breach. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and do that because uh, this, I, I want folks to realize that what's occurring the killings that occurred in um, the killings that occurred. Let me read that for the podcast audience. The Republican Congress. This is exactly who they are. Exactly. That is exactly who they are. And I want people to correspondingly blame them as they should. This the, the killing that occurred in Maine is a direct result of Republican policies. Uh, let's see. Uh, E2247 says, Bridge, I ate over till the fat aga aficionado sing. Funny. Michael Rodden says, Not really. I took a day off from responding to the conservatives in chat. And Egberto, you went off on a rant. It was something else. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, whenever the, 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 you, you, there's nothing like making people powerless by ignoring. I will never ignore my peeps, but you, you understand what I'm saying, right, Bridge? You know exactly what I'm saying. All right. Let's see what else we have. Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver. He says, legislative elections were held in the Palestine territories on 25 January 2006 in order to elect second Palestinian legislative council, the legislature of the Palestinian National Authority. The result was a victory for Hamas, contesting under the list name of change and reform, which received 44.45% of the vote, 174 of the 132 seats, whilst the ruling Fatah received 41 41.43 .43 of the vote and 145 seats. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what happened, right? 
All right, what else have we got here? What else have we got here that I need to read? Egberto, no complaints with Russia, working on behalf of Assad in Syria, bombing hospitals in Syria. No complaints by Muslims when China is putting Muslims in Western China in re-education camps. Look, I can't sit back and discuss solely about the issues of every country around the world. I can discuss about what we as Americans are doing around the world what we are complicit with others in doing around the world and how we can protect our citizens from suffering the blowback from having a government that does all the wrong things internationally. And I believe if more Americans understood what we do, they would make sure that they elect people that don't do that. Because not only is it immoral, not only is it wrong, but we put a lot of people's lives in jeopardy. I think everybody can agree with that. I think everybody should agree with that. It's not like, like I say all the time, this is not rocket science. This is by no means rocket science. Anyhow, this was the second day I wanted to cover the deal about uh, GM. And I'm going to go into it real quickly. GM made record profits, $3.1 billion. And they still can't find it within themselves. They still cannot find it within themselves to pay the workers what they're worth. I want you to think about that. Now, Ford, I don't know if it came out yet. Has the earnings for Ford come out yet? Anybody knows? Has the earnings for Ford? Yeah, the show is almost over, Bridge. You're right about that. Has the earnings for Ford come out yet? Because Ford signed that deal to give them a 25% raise so damn fast, it seems like they did so because when their earnings of two point something billion dollars showed up, you know what was going to happen. Egberto Willis, regarding the story, the same, your story, same as Northern Ireland, no one, including the US, would go against Britain. What they did during that famine and then took six are our 32 counties, best ones, and then sent in their army combined with the Protestant army, the UDF, and then the people rose up, IRA, and called them terrorists. Exactly. That's what they do, Bridge. That is what they do. They, they damage the people. The people fight back. And then what are they? But you know what? It's so curious. We are always quick to call everybody terrorists, right? What do we call, let's say, the our founding fathers who fought Great Britain to form the United States of America. Great Britain thought called them terrorists as well, right? What did the British call the Israelis who fought uh, who fought like hell and I think blew up the hotels, if not if not mistaken, to get their autonomy? Terrorists, right? So we got to be careful. We have to be very careful in how we define things. And how we look at things. And one of the reasons why uh, Republicans and neoliberal Democrats are not very interested in you being educated is because an educated American is a powerful American. Look, an educated anybody is powerful. But when you have an educated America that has the resources that America has, madre mia, it is powerful. Madre mia. It is powerful. I want you guys to think about that. I want you guys to be cognizant about that. It is so important. It is so very important. So repeating what uh, what Bridge has to put on the screen, the Republican Congress, this is exactly who they are, which is an AR-15 pin on their suits. That's who they are. And they need to take full responsibility for what is occurring. Stepping away a few minutes today, it's been an odd day. See you tomorrow. It has been a very odd day. Uh, I, I, I tell you, I feel stressed, distressed, not stressed, distressed about what's happening in uh, Palestine, in, in Israel, in, Hama- in Gaza. I feel terrible about what's happening in Maine. Uh, we are seeing a, a man-made deterioration of our systems. 
E2247 says Palestinian Health Ministry published details of 7,028 killed after Biden questions death toll as West Bank arrest campaign intensifies. I'm glad that they did that. You know, what they should do is they, and I know this is sort of bad, but what they should do is throw, put all these bodies in a warehouse and, and then say courtesy of the bombers out of Israel, courtesy of the bombs out of Israel and say uh, they didn't kill those Israelis. Hamas did. Why don't you go after Hamas instead of killing innocent people? Egberto Willis, you asked Ford Motor reported third quarter earnings. The company withdrew its guidance for the year due to UAW strike. Ford's EV unit post, posted $1.3 billion loss for the quarter. You know, that was a, that's all they said. But that's their EV unit. What's your total? What's your gross profit? I'd love to hear that number. Because you know what happens? Let me just say something about accounting breach. That $1.3 billion loss is not even real, right? What you do is you take all these costs up front. Uh, they, they, uh, seven, they, they do things like, let's take it like 729 costs and all these kinds of things to make it seem like we had this humongous loss instead of amortizing things that are not going to be charged in subsequent years. It's all trickery in accounting, especially during a strike especially during a strike. The only reason they settled is because they know the real numbers were going to come out. And I heard, I don't have the exact numbers for it, but I heard that ultimate amount was going to be a net $2.3 billion in profit. Uh, let's see, gross. Ford Motor uh, gross profit between June 2032 was $7.43 billion. See what I'm talking about? A 6.92 increase year over year. Ford Motor gross profit for the 12 months ending June 2032 was $25 billion. This is all in one year. They don't have the money to pay the workers, though. 9.25 increase year to year. Ford Motor gross annual profit of 2022, $23.66 billion. 9.08 over 2021. Ford Motor annual gross profit for 2021 was $21.69 billion. 50.71% over 2020. Ford Motor annual gross profit for 2020, 14.39 billion, a 32.14 decline from 2019. I want you guys to understand the 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 theft, the theft of of our resources by these damn corporations. I I want you to see that. I want you to understand that. All right. Uh, on sales, how much an important stat? Again, it doesn't matter on sales of how much. The, the entity of Ford is one. And no matter what is in that black box, the, 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 the sales, the, 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 the actual profit tells you they are a washed in cash. They are a washed in monies. And that money is money not paid to the employees. I got to get out of here. So what I need to do is first ask you guys, I, I hope you enjoyed the program today. Uh, we kind of took a, a little tour of, of reality. Uh, we took a, what I call a reality tour. I hope you enjoyed that. If you didn't enjoy it, let me know. Drop me a line. Say, Egberto, I hate, I hate when you give us that history lesson. If you do, I accept that. But I just needed to know, needed to say these things because too often we are very, very ill informed. And if there's one thing I want you to come to Politics Done Right to do, is to become informed. Please support the program. How can you support the program? Go to politicsunright.com slash support. Politicsunright.com slash support. That gives you all the different avenues that you can use to support what we do. And what we do is extensive. We write blogs to keep our keep our our information into the ethos. We write books. Uh, we get, we do videos, TikToks, Instagrams, Reels, everything to make sure that we do our part to populate the progressive space with our message, so that all the right wing lies and all the right wing 
information doesn't get maximum coverage. We break into that coverage. It costs to do that. 16 hours a day, and we depend on your support to be able to do this over and over and over again. So please go to politicsandright.com slash support. It has all the different ways in which you can support us. I'd like to ask you to be a paid subscriber of our of our newsletter. I'm going to have a special issue uh, going out. Uh, well, two pieces going out. One on our local politics. And eventually I'm going to write up in, in probably a 1200 word uh, piece what I talked about where I relate Panama, Iraq, and, Palis, and, and, and Israel and, and point those things out in an in a easy to understand manner. So please support us. Politicsandright.com slash support gives you all the different forms in which you can support us. And politicsandright.com slash newsletter, I ask you to please become a paid subscriber of our newsletter. We need hundreds, actually thousands of paid subscribers at that minimum level to really allow us to do what we need to do, continue doing what we need to do. I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willies. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.